Hi, welcome to a new video, and in this one we're going to be looking at this, a Practica MTL3. Um, so, these were made in Germany in the uh, mid to late 70s through to the early 80s, and um, East Germany that is, not West Germany, East Germany. Very, very, very simple, the MTL3. It's a fully mechanical camera. Um, so it does have a battery, does have a light meter, but the battery purely runs the light meter, absolutely nothing else. You can take the battery out and you still have every single shutter speed available to you. It's stopped down metering, so you do need to press this little lever on the top here, which also acts as a depth of field preview. Um, M42 screw mount thread on there and uh, this one is a 50 mil 1.8 pentacon lens uh, that we have here now this is actually um it's not the one but the mtl3 was the very first camera i ever owned very very first one well not Actually, that's not true. The very first camera I ever owned was a Kodak disc camera, I think, when I was about 10. Um, but in terms of SLRs, this was the very first SLR I owned. Um, was given it by my uncle. Um, not this one, as I say, but one of them. This one I picked up on eBay, as I got rid of mine many years ago, quite foolishly. Although, this is a particularly nice example. Um, it's probably actually in better condition than the one I originally had. Uh, now, one of the nice things about these, as well, is it actually has a metal shutter rather than a cloth shutter which does help preserve its longevity they're fairly much as you would expect from East German 70s school of design so a little bit rugged and brutalist looking they're actually incredibly well built if not particularly pretty uh, now I haven't just bought this as a doorstop although it has joined the collection of cameras you can see behind me but it will be used and what I'm going to use in it is this a roll of true print 35 millimeter film so obviously it's a 35 mil film um, FG plus true print now true print were a um printing company in the UK, mail order printing company in the UK, um, and I've got no idea when they disappeared from that market. It does say on here, use within 24 months of receipt. I've got a feeling this roll is over 20 years old, so this is definitely expired film by quite a large margin this is expired film so that does mean it could be a bit of a challenge um, now they generally reckon that um, for every 10 years it loses about a stop of sensitivity if it's been stored well I found this in my garage in a box so I idea how well it's been stored at all we'll just have to wait and see uh, but being about 20 years old I think this stuff is 200 ASA I will have to double check um, but I reckon I'm probably as a result going to have to whack this down if it is 200 ASA to about 50 ASA and we'll see what we get out of it it could be complete rubbish but yeah I'm gonna run through this thing see what we get out of it um, and if there's any decent photographs I might turn this into um, a video that shows you the photographs as well but in the meantime yes the MTL3 from Practica um, a 70s stroke 80s classic I suppose right let's load the film and go and take some pictures Okay, so as you can see, we did get some shots out of the MTL3 and our Super Snaps film. A um, couple of things about the film. The exposure degradation, reduced sensitivity to light of about two stops seems to have been about right, um, which is good to understand and as you can see from the shots got some pretty good results out of it i'm certainly happy with them um it had picked up quite a color cast i've removed some of that in the images um but i 
important to take all of it away. It's got a bit of a yellowy um, cast to a lot of the images, um, and that's noticeable particularly in the ones with grass. Um, the contrast seems to have held up quite well despite its age, which again um, is something that can reduce, although the grain has intensified, but I do suspect that the Super Snaps film was not renowned for its fine grain, even in its heyday, so it doesn't really surprise me that uh, it's, a, it's a bit grainy. But I'm actually quite pleased with the way that some of these shots have come out. Um, they do look pretty good. Um, I'm quite happy with the results, uh, particularly given that this is the first um, film that I've shot in at least 25 years. And um, I think it was fitting going back to it with an MTL-3. Now, um, I shot this film over a period of about two or so weeks, going out on my usual um, walks to take photographs. So I tended to whack it in the back as I went along. Only one lens, the 50mm. Um, I haven't picked up any more uh, M42 lenses yet. So uh, we were sticking to a nifty 50 and it was, it was nice to... Yeah, be reduced back to that. It certainly was interesting hitting the shutter and not getting that instant feedback if you want it that digital gives you. Um, unfortunately, if I just show you, the more um, keen-eyed amongst you may notice that the MTL3 has unfortunately suffered a bit of a loss. I don't know where and when, but the self-timer lever has fallen off. Um, I've got no idea when that happened and I have tried back tracing my steps to see uh, if I could find it anywhere but to no avail so um, I do apologize to the little old practica I have um, after it's almost 40 year probably 40 year life managed to lose a bit of it in the last two weeks so very sorry for that but it stood up well and I was actually quite impressed with how accurate the metering was how usable the focusing screen was um, Although 1.8 was, you know, a fairly bright lens to have on it. I'm not convinced if you put slower lenses on there, it wouldn't get quite dark quite quickly. Um, but it did the job. And certainly there was some quite tricky lighting conditions in some of the shots and it worked quite well in that regard. So really pleased with how it turned out. A couple of things I'd forgotten. Um, well actually one mainly I'd forgotten about the um, MTL-3 is it's got something that not a lot of cameras of its age all really manually orientated 35mm cameras have and that is um, an indicator after you've released the shutter so in the MTL3 a little black kind of pointed arrow indicator pops up in the lower left hand corner of the focusing screen to indicate that you've taken a shot but not wound the film on yet. That's actually more useful than a lot of people give it credit for. So yeah, really impressed with how it's held up. Um, it's been a long time since I've used one of these, uh, probably at least 30 odd years, uh, and really enjoyed it. So this is my trip back into film photography. It won't be my last. Um, just to give you an idea of costs, I picked this one up on eBay. Uh, as I say, it was pretty much mint until I lost a bit of it. With the 50mm um, 1.8, and that's a Pentacon, so not the best, but not the worst. And I paid £35, um, pretty much, yeah, around about £35, including postage. You can occasionally pick them up cheaper than that in slightly ropier or worn condition but is it an ideal first introduction to um 35 mil photography not necessarily the best value for money you're going to get no um there are better things out there that will allow you to get more for less money but it's not a bad start for me it was more of a nostalgia hit um but there's a later variation of the practica that i'll be coming on to that i've picked up and if i just uh, grab that off of the shelf up here that we will be coming and looking at, and that is the Practica BX20, which was a later uh, Practica model, and the second SLR I ever owned. So we will be coming back and having a look at this in a, uh, a future video. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting, and uh, take care and goodbye.